Thanks for joining me here and watching uh, this video on some comping ideas for autumn leaves. Um, comping, you know, is, is one of those things that a lot of people don't really thoroughly investigate, um, particularly early on in their, in their playing. Um, most people are really interested in soloing single lines, my, myself included. Um, but, you know, when we really study harmony, um, it really helps our single line playing too. So um, I think studying this stuff has is, is really made me a better player and also a much better accompanist. <clears throat> so um, before we look at you know, the choices I made here, I want to uh, maybe look at the, the larger picture. So we're talking about the A section. That, um, we're going to talk about the first eight bars. And if we look at the basic harmony, we have C minor 7, F7, B flat major 7, E flat major 7, A minor 7, D7, G minor 6. And I'm using shell voicings right now just to outline that harmony. Um, so those were seven different harmonies. And um, we have seven notes in a major scale, right? Um, this was all seven pitches in the B-flat major scale, starting on the second degree, C, right? And moving through the diatonic cycle of fourths. So C, up a fourth to F, up a fourth to B-flat, up a fourth to E-flat, up an augmented fourth to A, right? Because we got to be diatonic to the key of B-flat. Uh, up a fourth to D and up a fourth to G. So that's the harmonic motion. Um, you know, the analysis we just did was in the key of B, of B flat major. So two, five, one, four, seven, three, six. Um, we can also look this, at this as a series of um, two different two, five, ones, right? So we have two, five, one in the key of B flat major. Then we have a bridge chord, the four chord. And then we have two, five, one in the key of G minor. So I think it's good to see it both ways. Um, all in the relationship to the, the key center of B flat, um, and then as in a relationship to B flat N, and then a separate relationship to G minor. Um, so, you know, when I'm comping, a couple of things that are import, really important to me. Um, is voice leading. Uh, you know, I, I like things to fit together really well. <clears throat> um, and my rhythmic phrasing, right? I, I want this stuff to swing. I want to be able to um, create rhythms that push, push, push the time forward or, or, or feel good. So let's look at the voicings I chose and some of the rhythms. So what I did for C minor, I basically took a C minor seven chord root, seventh, third, fifth, and I just broke it up uh, in the first measure. I played quarter note with the root, the seventh, and the third, and then another quarter note on beat three with the seventh, third, and fifth. So one, two, three, four, right? And then for the dominant, for the F7, um, I used an F 13 flat 9, right? And, I, and actually, I don't have a root. I, I started with the third, so I have third, flat 7, flat 9, natural 13, right? A, E flat, G flat, D. Um, this is a very tense chord. This is um, comes from the diminished scale. We used to call it um, D 
dim dom, diminished dominant, that was the terminology at the University of Miami for harmony that came out of the diminished scale. And then I took the 13 and I move it to the fifth. All right, so I have a diminished shape, but it's an F7 flat nine. So, so the first two measures. All right, and then we're gonna resolve to the one chord, E flat major seven. I'm going to E flat major seven, but I'm gonna add some tension by approaching the E flat with an E nine chord, right? So, and this is basically a, a, a secondary dominant, right? It's actually a tritone substitution for a B flat seven. That's the theoretical way to look at it, right? So if I resolve to B flat, two, five, one, I, I can put, I can actually turn this dominant right before I move to E flat to, to create a little tension. Um, I can create a dom, I can make it dominant or I can use its tritone substitution. So this will be the tritone sub for B flat seven. So this is what we have. So it creates a real nice pull. I call it like a gravitational pull. And then we have resolution at the four chord. Now, now we're going to go to um, the A half diminished. I'll, I'll call this the two in a two, five, one, the G minor, right? So we have the two half diminished. And what do I do? How do I get there? Same thing. I, I, I chromatically voice lead, right? So just a sidestep. And then I do it again in the other direction, right, with a syncopated rhythm. So one, two, three, four, and one, two. Then I get to my dominant to take me to G minor. I play a D7 sharp nine. And then I move to a D7 flat nine with a sharp five. So I have two different voicings for D7. And then I'm gonna to resolve to my tonic minor, the G minor six. And I make it a G minor six with a nine on top, right? Um, I don't have it, actually I don't have a G in this chord. I, I have E's in the bass. I could put G there if you wanted to. Um, and then I actually add a little bit more tension here. I have two, two measures of G minor. So I resolve to G minor six, and then immediately I go to this E flat diminished, which is actually functioning as a, a dominant, a D seven flat nine, right? So it's this idea that if I resolve to a minor, I, could, I can create tension or another, another cadence by going back to the dominant. So what happens here, um, Tonic minor, dominant, tonic minor. And then at the very end of the eight bar phrase, I move that voicing up a half step. So G minor six, moving up a half step. I'm actually gonna keep G in the bass. This actually becomes G seven, sharp five, flat nine. The dominant that's gonna take me back to C minor, right? So G becomes the five of C minor to take me back to um, the second A in Autumn Leaves. All right, so again, that exercise sounds like this. And you see I've got um, some syncopation going on in there. So when we talk about syncopation, we're really talking about an attack that's falling on an upbeat, right? So on, on the end of one, the end of two, the end of three, or the end of four, um, generally. And um, there's, there's two ways that we can syncopate something. We can either um, anticipate, so we're, we're actually getting there 
before the downbeat or we, we can delay after the downbeat. Um, in, in this case, um, I've got quite a few anticipations of the harmony, so they're falling on the end of beat four. Uh, for example, in bar three, So I get to that E flat major seven on the end of four. One, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, four, and right. Same thing happens in the next measure. One, two, three, four, and one, two, three, and four, and happens again in bar five, right? I anticipate the D seven uh, on the end of four. Um, happens again in the next measure on the E flat uh, on the G minor six, um, and it. And it happens again uh, on the G minor 6 in, in the last bar. So um, lots of anticipations here. That would be a good, good uh, rhythm to, to get used to how, how it feels because um, it can really help make this stuff swing. Anyway, so hopefully that was um, helpful kind of seeing how, how I think about that. Um, thanks for spending this time with me.